What's up everybody? Welcome back. Thank you for checking out the channel. Uh, I'm Kyle and uh, today I'm going to continue on with the beginner lessons. Uh, last time we looked at playing open major chords and we were just kind of randomly strumming the chords. Today I want to focus on uh, putting some structure to your strumming so it'll be a little more fun for you to play and so it'll sound a lot more musical, right? So let's go ahead and look at how we can add some rhythm to our chords. All right, the first thing I want to do is talk about bars and beats. Or we could go to the bar and listen to beats. Either way is fine with me. But I guess since we're here, we'll talk about bars and beats. So what is a bar? A bar is a group of beats. So you can think about it like this. A song is divided into multiple bars, and each bar is divided into a set number of beats. This breaks the song up into smaller pieces and makes it a little more manageable. So I'm going to draw a picture of this so we can kind of get a visual idea of what this is about. So we're just going to do a very basic example and use four beats for one bar. So here's our bar and we need to break it up into four equal parts. Okay, so we'll split it in half and then we split those in half. Okay, so then we're going to label each piece one, two, three, four and each one of these blocks represents a beat. So how can we use this? Well, we can play a note or a chord on any of these blocks or on all of these blocks or however we want to do it. So let's take a look at an example of where we just play a chord on the first beat of the bar and we let the chord ring through all four beats. So let's take a look at playing a chord one time over a four beat bar. It would sound something like this. One, two, three, four. So we played the chord one time and we let it ring over the entire bar, all four beats. So now let's try to play the chord twice during this bar. The best way to do that is to split the bar in half. So we would play the chord on the first beat and then let the second beat ring and then we would play it on the third beat and then we would let the fourth beat ring. So let's hear an example of that. Now let's take a look at playing a chord two times over a four beat bar. So we would do this. One, two, three, four. Okay? So you can tell that was a little faster, and that was because we squeezed two chords into the same amount of space. So now let's do that for every beat of this bar. We're going to play on one, two, three, and four. We'll strum the chord on each beat. Okay, now let's look at playing a chord four times over a four beat bar. It would be like this. One, two, three, four. So you see that got even faster because now we're playing four chords in the same space. And you may think, well, that's it. We've only got four beats. But actually, you can divide them even further where you're playing on the half beat or even more than that. So in this case, we're going to play on the half beat, which means we're playing two chords per beat. So we're going to strum the chord two times per beat. So that's eight times in this bar. So let's check that out. So now the last example I'm going to do today, we're going to play a chord eight times over a four beat bar. So we're going to count this one and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four and. That's playing it eight times over four beats. Another trick I want to show you real quick is that you can tell that that's kind of quick for downstrokes. So what you can do is on the ands, you can upstroke and that'll cut your movement in half a little bit. So instead of doing all downstrokes, you can do it like this. One and two and three and four and. So far, we've been playing something on every beat of this bar. Either we're playing the chord on the beats or we're letting the chord ring through the beats. Um, I just want to mention that you don't have to do that either. You can also rest on the beats. So what I have circled is my representation of letting the chord ring. but. You may have heard of something called a rest before. A rest is when you don't have any notes or sounds playing at all. So instead of letting these chords ring on beats two and four, what we could do is rest. So those little squiggle lines are the notation for rest, or at least my attempt to draw it on here, even though that's not exactly what that looks like. But anyway, I'm gonna go through some examples in a minute, but I wanted to mention that you don't have to rest on two and four. You can rest on any beat you want or a half beat or anything like that. 
So really, it's wide open. You can play whatever you want. Um, you just have to know when the bar is ending and when to change chords and stuff like that. Okay, so that's the basics of bars and beats and how you can apply rhythm with chords. So what I want to do now is I want to show you how to move between chords by applying these principles. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the original example that I showed where we played the chord on the first beat of the bar and let it ring through the whole bar. But this time, after the bar is over, we're going to change chords and do the same thing. So for this example, I want to use the G chord, the C chord, and the D chord. And when you practice this, practice using these chords in this sequence for now. Okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to strum the chord one time, we're going to count out the bar, and when the bar ends, we're going to change chords. Okay? So here's how it's going to go. We're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you'll notice what I did was I went back to the root chord at the end of the progression. And that's what I want you to do too. I want you to play the G chord, the C chord, the D chord, and then back to the G chord, and then end it there. So you see how this example works. So now I'm going to go through the next example where we were playing the chord twice per bar. So let's check out how that would work. Again, I'm using the same chords, G, C, and D. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So I think this will help you get a sense of rhythm and it'll continue to help you build your hand strength when you're changing chords and you'll get a sense of when to change chords. It'll start becoming a little more natural to you. So for the other two examples, uh, I'm going to change chords uh, just so you can have two things you can try to work on. So in this example, we're going to use A, D, and E. Again, when you try this, do it in that order because they make musical sense and I'll explain a little bit about that in a later video. But uh, for now, don't worry about that. Just use these chords because I'm telling you they work. Okay. So for the next example, we're going to do two strums per beat. So let's see how that sounds. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you may find that a little challenging because you have to kind of double downstroke every time. So I want to mention one thing here. This is a good opportunity to start working in some upstrokes. You're already down there. Why not cut your movement in half and just strum as you're coming back up? One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So you can see that they sound very similar, but there is a little bit of a difference. So I want to play them back to back so you can hear what they sound like. Okay? So just practice doing that. Practice moving through these chords. The first set was G, C, and D. And the second set was A, D, E. And you always end on the root chord when you do this. All right, so I want to talk about this a little bit more. So what I've shown you so far, it's been very rigid where, you know, you do one and two, or you do one, two, three, four, or you just do one, or you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, you know? <clears throat> where it's directly on the beat and you're cutting things in half. I just want you to know that that's not always the case. You don't have to do that. You can play on some of the beats. You can play on all of the beats. You don't have to play on any of the beats. Uh, let's do a few examples of this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add an and at the end of the progression. We're going to go back to G, C, and D. And so I'm going to go one, two, three, four, and. One, two, three, four, and. That's going to be my bar or my rhythm for my bars, okay? So it'll be like this. One, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, and. So you see how I added the extra and in there? 
All right, so now I want to do an example with some rest. Again, you can place these rests wherever you want. Experiment around with a little bit. Some places make more sense than others, but there's no rules. So, you know, do it how you want to. Uh, for this example, I'm going to go back to the A progression where we've got A, D, and E. So this time I'm going to do one, and then I'm going to rest on beats two and three, and then play again on four. So that would sound something like this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you can do anything you want to. You can play around with it. I mean, you can go. I mean, there's no rules about what you have to do. You just kind of need to understand the structure behind what you're playing. You need to understand when the bars are ending and beginning. Other than that, just play around with changing up the rhythms and moving between chords. Eventually, it'll start to really sink into you. Um, this is one of those things that the more you do it, the more it'll make sense and the better you'll sound when you do it. So again, just try it and uh, play around with your rhythms. Just try to be clean and keep an idea of where the bars are, when you're starting, when you're ending, and when you need to change chords. All right, so that's pretty much it. What I want you to do for practice is do what we've been doing. You know, play the chord one time, change chords, play the chord, you know, make sure that you change at the end of the bar or the beginning of the next bar, I should say. And, um, you know, just change up your strumming patterns. Do it one time, do it two times, do it, throw some ands in there. You know, just play around with it, have some fun with it. And just remember, if you're still having trouble changing between chords, don't worry about it. Just power through it, keep working at it, and eventually your fingers will settle in and they'll know where to go. And playing this with rhythm will help you get a little bit more control of that. So just keep working at it. You'll have no problems with it. So I hope this video helped you out. Please remember to hit the like button on your way out and uh, take it easy and keep playing.